I think Brexit's going to end up being a great thing. But I predicted the heat I took was unbelievable. Mm. And I said, because people don't want to have other people coming in and destroying their country. I thought the UK was so smart in getting out. And you were there, and you guys wrote it, put it on the front page. Yes. Trump said that Brexit was going to happen. Yes. Right? And it happened. Yes. And that was where it was going to lose easily. You know, everybody thought I was crazy. Obama said they'll go to the back of the line, meaning if it does happen. Mm -hmm. And then he had to retract. That was a bad statement. And what now we're at the front of the queue. Yeah. I think you're doing great. Countries want their own identity. Well, the president-elect is also speaking out about tightening U.S. borders. In an interview with the Times of London and Germany's Bild newspaper, Trump said he will implement extreme security vetting of immigrants. He suggested German Chancellor Angela Merkel should have done that. I think she made one very catastrophic mistake, and that was taking all of these illegals, in, in, you know, taking all of the, the people from wherever they come from, and nobody really knows where they come from. You'll find out. It was a wide-ranging interview. Uh, Britain's decision to leave the European Union was another talking point for the president-elect. Here's what he had to say about Brexit. Listen. I thought the UK was so smart in getting out. And, and countries want their own identity. And the UK wanted its own identity. But I do believe this. If they hadn't been forced to take in all of the refugees, so many, with all the problems that it you know, entails, I think that you wouldn't have a Brexit. It probably could have worked out. And CNN London correspondent Max Foster joins me now. So, Max, what's been the reaction across Europe to Donald Trump's comments, to Germany's Bild newspaper particularly, criticising Chancellor Angela Merkel on immigration matters, attacking NATO and praising Brexit? Well, it's so wide-ranging, as you say. We're still waiting to hear from Angela Merkel's office. But at the same time, he did say he had great respect for Angela Merkel and accepted she was the most powerful politician uh, in Europe. So we're waiting to hear from her. She's faced all that criticism already internally, of course, as well on immigration. So this is something she will have her standard response to, I'm sure. Uh, but this is the world's most powerful leader making all sorts of comments about issues which affect the whole continent. And I think we can pretty much assume that it will be very welcome in terms of what he said on Brexit for the current Prime Minister, Theresa May, because she's got this very big speech tomorrow where she's having to outline her plan for Brexit, and it does look as though she's moving towards this idea of a hard Brexit, which is actually leaving the single European market, which could have a huge impact on the British economy, of course. Uh, what she would need is other trade deals to compensate for that, and absolutely at the top of her list uh, would be a trade deal with the United States. And in that interview, uh, Donald Trump did talk about a quick trade deal with the United Kingdom supporting the idea of Brexit, so he will be supporting her. So this could not have come at a better time for Theresa May and the British government, at least. We'll have to wait to see what the Germans have to say about this, but these are criticisms that they've had before. Yeah, most definitely. And Max, uh, Donald Trump even went so far as to put Angela Merkel on an equal footing with Russian President Vladimir Putin, telling both the Times of London and Bild newspaper that he trusts them both the same. An extraordinary break from U.S. foreign policy. What's being said about that? Well, it's interesting. Perhaps it's about, you know, he's very big on relationships. He doesn't have a relationship um, with uh, Angela Merkel yet or with uh, President Putin either, a personal relationship, maybe he's waiting to see, but uh, really the headline coming out of the Russian story is that idea uh, that um, uh, sanctions could be a deal maker when it comes to reducing nuclear weapons around the world, so Russia's nuclear weapons, so perhaps uh, he could, he's looking potentially at reducing sanctions on Russia if they can reach a deal on nuclear weapons, and that's really what most people are talking about here uh, at the moment, because that would be uh, quite a profound uh, change in policy, really, for the United States, and would affect, of course, the entire world. But we're beginning to get a, a better sense of his foreign policy, at least... Uh, more than we're getting from his Twitter. So we've got an interview. He's fleshing it out at last. Yeah, and another thing that he talked about was NATO. He attacked NATO. I mean, we have heard that before. But again, that would uh, make many feel very uneasy. Uh, yeah, particularly in Scandinavia, for example, in Eastern Europe, where there's a huge concern that uh, Russia is encroaching on borders there and uh, airspace and sea space as well. So, uh, you know, in Scandinavia, I know uh, that uh, many people see 
holds uh, NATO very dear, even if they're not members with NATO, because they, they feel that that would ultimately be what protects them. But Donald Trump made it very clear again that he thinks the concept is quite outdated, and he gets very frustrated that other members of NATO, apart from the United States, aren't contributing as much as they should. So that's going to be a big pressure when it comes to doing deals in Europe in future, I think, probably. If they want to keep NATO, they're going to have to contribute more. But again, we're getting a sense of that, and that, that does help at least governments here uh, work out their, their policy when it comes to the United States. Yeah, just days away from his inauguration, a lot of people very uneasy, certainly across Europe. We will, of course, wait to see more details on this. Uh, Max Foster, many thanks to you, as always.